thing happens to kids sometimes. A day exploring at the museum, playing in the backyard, choosing books at the library, shopping at the grocery. We will be out having fun and without meaning to, we learn something. Kids learn best when we don't know we're learning. It's because little learners have great ideas all of the time. We are curious all of the time. I make sense of my world by asking questions, investigating, exploring, and creating. I can learn anywhere, anytime. As a matter of fact, learning about my world while I'm actually out in the real world just makes sense. Peter Potter, I can learn so much more in the real world than I can limited by the four walls of my house or school. I love learning through play and exploring my world, but do you want to know what's better than that? When I learn by exploring my world with you. Dr. Julia Roberts has a thought to share on this topic. All adults have an inner child and some of them kind of hide it so much that it isn't noticeable. But it is the playfulness, it is the joy in learning and to be able to do that with a child in your class or your child at home is a huge gift that we can give to the young person. Where do we want to explore with you? That's an easy question to answer. Everywhere! Beth Schaefer explains a little about how and why children should learn on the go. In a structured environment, we, we limit children's opportunities. Um, and that's not the real world. And so often I feel, um, as a teacher, am I giving them the tools they can take out into the real world, or is it something they can, they can only do in the classroom? Um, when they take it out into the park, that's real life. Um, you don't learn to be a botanist by sitting in a classroom and reading um, textbooks and even researching it online. Um, it's out there doing it in the real world. Open the door and let me explore in the backyard. Take me to the park, let me play. Let me wonder and notice things about my surroundings. Let's stretch out on a blanket and look up at the sky for shapes in the clouds. It might sound silly, but I'm learning. I might notice the clouds move. I might notice there are different kinds of clouds. Give me a magnifying glass and let me count the number of legs on bugs. Help me build with things other than blocks. I wonder, can we make a house out of these branches? How far can I jump? How far can you jump? Which reminds me of another really important idea. Did you know kids often think better when they're moving? That's why sometimes at school, it's hard for us to sit in a chair and share our ideas. The beauty of learning in the real world is that it's real. We aren't doing just science or math or reading. In the real world, everything overlaps. It's authentic. Another advantage to taking my learning on the go is that it helps me learn new words. Nancy Houston will explain a little more about this. Is the language that you use in a doctor's office is very different than the language you use in your kitchen. And they are exposed to a lot of vocabulary they wouldn't hear otherwise unless they're there to experience. It's authentic. If they go to the post office, there are uh, multiple opportunities to talk about what the stamps look like, uh, uh, just standing in line. But don't miss those opportunities, that time that you have with your children, just waiting and not talking with them about what's around them. I think that's really a missed opportunity. When we're at the doctor's office, talk to me. Let me test out words like stethoscope. Encourage me to guess my weight or height before the nurse takes the measurement. If we're at the post office, show me maps on the wall. Tell me about the cost of stamps. When I get home or back to school, give me envelopes and a mail carrier hat. Let me pretend to sort mail. Imitation and imagination are how we learn about our world. There are many opportunities to learn every day. They are just disguised as doctor visits, walking the dog, or a trip to the grocery. Something else we spend a lot of time doing together is waiting. I don't know about your little learner, but I usually ask my dad if I can play on his phone to pass the time. When we are waiting, it sometimes ends up looking like this. I like my Learn to Read app, but do you know what's better? This. Do you see the difference? We're exploring. We're talking. 
I'm learning along with you. Using technology is important. Someday, I'm going to use technology that doesn't even exist yet. If I have experiences with technology when I'm little, then I'll be better prepared to use anything new that comes along later. You never know, I might be the person who invents it. But I need you to talk with me about the technology. Together, we should be asking questions, wondering, testing new apps, and exploring the functions of the tablet or computer. The local library is a wonderful place to visit. You know it helps me learn to read, but did you know there are more opportunities for learning? Making choices can be hard, especially when I'm surrounded by a giant room of books, videos, and puzzles. You can help me by telling me to pick out a certain number of books. Later, when we go to the store and you tell me I have a $10 budget, I'll already be used to staying within a certain limit. It's also a great time for us to snuggle up and read. Talk to me about the books. Listen to me talk about my interests. Help me choose books we can enjoy together. Let me explore alongside other children. There are many fun programs and special events at the local library. Most of them are free. Can't beat that, right? Buying books is great, but going to the library lets me be a part of our community. Sometimes it's nice if we do something really special, like go to an art or science museum. When we are there, we can explore together in a way we can't at school or home. They offer different experiences that children don't necessarily get at home or in school. Um, they are able to investigate different artifacts. They are able to investigate things from different time periods. Um, and also families can learn together. And I think that's really important that you have families that can come to one place and learn whatever fits into their liking. It can be overwhelming when we first walk in. But rather than making the plan for us, show me the map. Talk with me about the exhibits. Let me help make the plan for the day. Museum exhibits are created with curious little learners in mind. Mrs. Alfred is going to explain more about how museums help kids think in different ways. Well, if you notice when we talked about the Shapes and Stuff store, um, this is a space here at the Kentucky Science Center that's all shapes and sizes, different textures. Um, what we didn't do was we didn't put the typical um, boxes of cereal or cartons of eggs into our store um, because we wanted children to have open-ended experiences. And we knew by just giving them a bucket of shapes, it could be anything in the world that they wanted. Um, and that allows a child to use their imagination, um, to use scientific thinking, you know, they're observing the world around them and they're creating. Water's a great avenue for play for young children. It's also um, something that a parent can take home because water is free, it's most of the time safe, um, and it allows for great experiences, you know, measuring and, you know, talking about sinking and floating um, or different stages of matter. Um, you know, there's the liquid, the solid, and the gas, and they get to experience all three of those with an ice cube. Um, so there are some things that are so open-ended, like shapes and water, that allow for multiple experiences among children of different ages. You shouldn't be surprised if we don't make it through the whole museum. It's probably better if we don't. Have you ever noticed that kids like to reread books a hundred times? We like to watch our favorite movie until we've memorized every line. Exhibits in a museum are the same. We will want to stay at our favorite exhibit until we have learned everything we can. It means we are engaged. It means we are learning. Mrs. Alfred shares her goals for the kids that visit the Science Museum. I want them to have a well-rounded experience. Um, I want them to understand that science is in everything that they do. Um, science is not a one, two, three step process. Um, it's about exploring. It's about understanding um, the world that we live in and it's about observations. Um, I think the more time children are able to spend observing the world that they live in, they are better to understand it. 
Mrs. Alfred has a point. When we have time to explore, observe, and think about the world, we begin to understand. We also begin to understand how we can change it and make it better. Isn't that what you want for your little learner? There is no difference in living and learning. It is harmful and misleading to think of them as being separate. John Holt.